Hello, today, we will be doing another jump scare method where we spawn in the 3D mesh that plays sound and animation, here is the showcase. It is a bit slow due to optional delays. Anyway start by going to the temp spawner actor we made in the events tutorial. If you don't have one, make an empty blueprint actor which just has an arrow component. I will rename this to BP underscore spawner. Place one on the ground in front of the player, this is where the mesh spawns. I have experimented with some values and found these ones shown on screen to fit with my camera view. Spawners are generic, we can place as many as we want so I will be using a tag based system for the game to know which spawner the animatronics should use. Click on your actor, search for tags. Add a tag here. I will call it jump scare point, remember it since we need this later. Now, right click and create a blueprint pong class, it will be our jump scare actor. Open it and add a skeletal mesh component. For now select an animatronic and an animation blueprint, also adjust its transform. I updated the scale and my location is the start location. I want it coming from the bottom and leaping towards the player, so I put it at minus 500. Also put the rotation to minus 90 so it faces the right way. To make sure, I add a arrow component to see if the animatronic is in the right direction. I also add a sound component to play audio. Select the jump scare SFX, in the event graph, delete the events and get your skeletal mesh. On begin play, you want to set the skeletal mesh. From new mesh, drag it out and promote it to a variable. Name it animatronic mesh. Also tick instance editable and expose on spawn. Expose on spawn allows it to be an input on the spawn actor node. Compile and save. Next, get another skeletal mesh and search for set anim instance class. Promote this class to a variable too. Call it animation class. Also tick the instance editable and expose on spawn. Now we can animate the quick jump it does towards the player. Add a timeline node. Open it. It will be short like 0.2. Add a float track. Call it alpha. Add a keyframe at 0 and 0. Add another keyframe at the value 1 and the key time is 0.12. Select both keyframes and you can right click to select auto. That's all for the timeline, now you can get the mesh and set relative location. Add a lerp. Connect alpha to the alpha of the timeline. Then the A will be your current transform that you set it at. For the end locations, it can take a bit of experimenting. These values worked for me. This is to update head rotation and it will be broken for now. Get your skeletal mesh and get anim instance. Then call your head rotation interface. You can also duplicate it and put it at finished. Temporarily added a set pause game node as we don't have a main menu yet. Now to play the animation. I added a tiny delay here. I get the timeline reference and do a play from start. After compiling and saving, go to your master animatronic class and we can add our second method here. Right click and add a custom event call it spawn jump scare mesh. I add an optional short delay. I search for a node called get actors of class with tag. This will allow us to get that spawner in the world. Select the spawner class and then type in your jump scare tag. From out actors, search for a get node. Get the actors location. Also get the arrow component. From the arrow component look for get world rotation. Now get the spawn actor node and select your jump scare actor to spawn. From your transform, do a make transform. Connect up the location and rotation. Next, change the override to always spawn and ignore collisions. Also for transform, get actor scale 3D so the jump scare animatronic is the same as the animatronic AI. Now to fill in the variables, get your mesh and then get skeletal mesh and plug that in. Also from the mesh, get your anim class. Plug that in too. The event is done, now we have to call the event. Go to the jump scare event we made in part 1. At the end, I remove method 1 from this code. I will drag from the set world rotation and get the event we just made. Quickly I will add a spotlight to my jump scare animatronic since my lighting in the world is bad. Go to your class and add a spotlight. 
To put the spotlight in the right place, you need to first put the animatronic in the final position. So I change my animatronic to the end location and I place the spotlight and rotate it towards the animatronic's face, also adjust the intensity and attenuation. Once I have done that, I place the animatronic back to the start position. Test the game along the way to see if it works for you. Now, I will be adding a jump scare animation. If you have one, you could make play an animation montage like this footage. But I don't have an animation so I have to make a custom one in the animation blueprint. Go to your animatronic blueprint. In the anim graph, you might have some transform modifies. We will be using this method to create it. First add a blend pose by boolean. I recommend doing it before the head rotation modifier. Connect your old transforms to the false. Next, promote the active value to a variable. It will be a boolean called in jump scare mode. I will just copy this old transform nodes as I will be animating the arms too. Connect to true. Now to animate the true side. You do need to set the jump scare mode to true first so that the animation starts. Now if you click on a transform modifier, you can have the rotation tool in the editor and rotate the body parts to your liking. I will connect another transform bone and set this source bone to the spine. I will rotate the spine accordingly. I will do the same to the other body parts like the head and jaw. I was happy with this. Now turn off the jump scare variable as we don't want it to be in jump scare mode now. We will let the AI code decide the variable. To do that, we would have to go to our jump scare actor. Add a boolean variable called jump scare mode. Now to send data over, we could cast but we would have to cast to master animatronic class, jump scare actor class and any other animatronic blueprints we make and that could be long. I decided to just make an interface called bi underscore skeleton. This will have all the data shared for our animatronics. In here, we add a function. I add get meshes. This will have outputs of skeletal mesh component types and store all the body parts of the mesh. I just have it as a whole mesh so I add one output. Next, we now need the function for this part of the video. Call it get jump scare mode. This will have a boolean output. Call it jump scare active. Now we can compile and add it to all our classes to do with animatronics. I need to put it in the master animatronic class first. I go to the class settings. I find the interface category. I search for the created interface and I add it in. I have the function. Since master animatronic doesn't deal with the jump scare animations, I can ignore this function. But for the get meshes function, just put the mesh component here. We do the same for jump scare actor, add your interface here too. Now we also need to the jump scare mode function, add the variable that you just created here. We also need to open up the get meshes function and place the mesh component in here. For now, I removed the head rotation from the timeline. So get the jump scare variable and on the finished, we set it to true. You could do it in the event begin play too. Now that we set it to true, we have to link it to the animation blueprint. Go to the event graph. Add an event update animation. Get a try get pawn and here we can get the jump scare mode interface. We can set it to the variable we created in the animation blueprint. Once that is done, we have made the link between animatronic and the animation. Let's have a quick test. If it works then it is complete. Now. I am going to fix the look at player head rotation. I am going to hook the head rotation back to the timeline, both in the update and the finished line. Now we can fix the head rotation function. Go to your animatronic animation blueprint. Open your function. The problem is this animation reference variable. It would be empty since it can't get the reference of the jump scare actor. We need to replace this with our fix. First get a try get pawn owner. Then get our get meshes interface function. This mesh output, we can promote it to a local variable. Make sure it is a local variable. Name it local mesh and connect to branch. First, get a try get pawn owner and connect that to the rotation. 
Next get your local mesh variable and connect it to get socket location. That is all we need right now. The bug should be fixed and the code should run. I did it all for Bonnie. I am going to quickly just copy it all over to Chica. You can take your time to learn and add it to your other animatronics. Now you can test the game. I hope you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing and sharing. See you next time.